Well, despite being one of our biggest stars and receiving many offers, Bert Newton never worked overseas, crediting his success to just staying in Melbourne, where he was always a favourite son. Let's bring in his former boss, Eddie Maguire. Thank you for your time this morning, Eddie. Thanks, we all yeah. fell in love with him on camera, but you knew him off camera. What was he like as an employee and as someone you had to negotiate contracts with? <laughs> Uh, Sophie, to say I was Bert Newton's boss is stretching it. I, I couldn't carry Bert Newton's bag. So I was, he was a hero to me. Uh, Bert was a legend to me. I sat alongside him on set. I watched him as a young boy. Uh, I thrilled to everything about Bert Newton. And when the opportunity came for me to rehire him as CEO, it was one of the greatest moments of my career. And 20 to 1 became one of the great shows on the Nine Network. You mentioned, uh, Richard, there that uh, he was a Melbourne boy. Yeah, absolutely. Let's not forget, he was a kid who grew up in the slums of Fitzroy, not the inner city hipster spot that it is today. It was the slums of Melbourne. And as a 14-year-old, he went to 3XY. At the age of 15, he was on air with the, just the, the way that he was able to imagine himself and a life beyond the poverty of Fitzroy. He turned what was a piano factory in Richmond into Television City. He was the biggest name on radio. When they were going to pull down the theatres in Melbourne, it was Bert's name on the marquee that sparked the renaissance of live theatre in Melbourne. Yeah. He was a great football follower. He was a horse racer and a punter. He died on Derby Day, the day of champions. Could <laughs> yeah. there be a more fitting way for Bert to go out and even more so, he waited till he got out of lockdown because he wasn't going to have a matinee funeral. He was going to have a big one. And uh, I can tell you exclusively this morning on the Today Show that Paddy Newton will receive this morning a phone call from Premier Daniel Andrews of Victoria to offer the family a state funeral in Bert's honour oh. to be held probably at St Pat's Cathedral at his beloved Catholic Church uh, in the next uh, week or so. So that's what Melbourne feels about Bert Newton. That's what I feel about Bert Newton. And speaking to his legion of colleagues and friends over the last 12 hours or so, that's what everyone feels, a sense of loss, but also a sense of pride and love that our Bert has always been our Bert. Beautifully said, Ed, and that's entirely appropriate for the state funeral. That's, that's, that's wonderful news. Thank you for sharing it with, that, with, with us. But, um, Bert was such great talent, and Ed, you're, you're a pretty astute talent scout. What was that unique thing about him that made all of us, everybody, just fall in love with him? Something that you don't often hear in show business, Richard, is called generosity of spirit. Mm. If you have a look at his history, Graham Kennedy was the star and he was the mirror around him who would just shine the light in a different direction and they could turn an ad into a 10-minute piece of That's comedy right. genius together. Why? Because they gave of each other to get the gag, to make it happen. Didn't matter who was doing the gag, as long as the entertainment was coming and flying. No fluke that Graham Kennedy was his best man at his wedding. He mm. goes into work with uh, Don Lane. Don Lane becomes his lifelong friend, as you said earlier. You know, he, they met on air and became great friends. His relationship with his beautiful wife, Patty, and his family, which he shared with everybody. He was showbiz royalty. But I, I always think it, when, it was when Bert got on stage with the big international names, the Sammy Davis Juniors, the Bob Hopes. He could spar with Muhammad Ali. He could do anything. And you could see the sense of respect. America had Carson. The United Kingdom had Parkinson. And we had Bert Newton, <laughs> and he could match it with any of them. That's true. Eddie, it was no secret that he had a little help with his hair, and there's a rumour that all his hair pieces had names, <laughs> and perhaps one was called Eddie. Is that right? <laughs> <laughs> Sophie, I knew I'd made it when Bert Newton, <laughs> one, knew my name, and two, named his toupee after me. <laughs> And, oh and that was Bert. Yeah, Bert said, I was on everything at that stage. I may as well be on his head as well. <laughs> and, and that's what he was about. But at the same time... <laughs> at the same time, Bert would be one of your greatest cheerleaders. I'd get letters from Bert uh, hosting the Logies. The first letter I received was from Bert. The next day, the first phone call, well done, you did a great job last night, whatever the case. He would send you text messages. I've, I've got, I was looking through them last night, actually. Yeah. In moments when things were tough, 
Bert was always in your corner. He was that sort of guy. He wanted people to succeed. It goes back to the earlier point which you were making. And that is his generosity of spirit. He wanted people to do well. He mm. wanted Australian television to be great. He wanted the Logies to be as big as they possibly could. And as I said, every time we turned to Bert, whether it was 20 Logies as a host, whether it was to get theatre going in, in Melbourne and Australia again, whether it was getting Bert back out to get a big show to happen on Channel 9. And, and let's not forget, he worked at Channel 7 and Channel 10 as well. I mean, he, he, ma he remade morning television after the great traditions of his friend Mike Walsh on the Nine Network with the, the Midday Show. He was a giant. He could do anything. And not only that, he ran 3DB. He was a great businessman. So he knew the show and he knew the business. And in many ways, you know, I looked at Bert as somebody who I just idolised, not only for the way he went about doing his things on air, but also behind the scenes. Yeah, he had his foibles, but he was always looking for fun. And uh, Bert, at 83 years of age, even last week, that beautiful shot of him with his grandchildren mm -hmm. in bed, in his hospital bed, still giving of himself, was absolutely Bert Newton to a T. Oh. Loved and respected by all. Eddie, thank you for coming on our show today and uh, those beautiful words and sharing that news about the state funeral. That's yeah. terrific. Wonderful tribute. Thanks, Ed.